Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 199. Uh, today I'm going to review Wizard's Brew. Uh, this is a game from Griffin Games, actually a remake of a game that I cannot pronounce the name of. I think that game is about 15 years old or so. Uh, designed by Alan Moon and Aaron Weisblum. So Alan Moon, of course, designed Ticket to Ride. And uh, I could try to tell you what the game is about and what it's like. But let me just jump into how it works, because it is very much a wonky kind of game. And then I'll come back and tell you more about what I think about it. So the first thing that we want to notice about the game here is we've got a city here of four hexes. We've also got some mountains, uh, some desert, some water, and some plains areas, as well as some forest on this side here. The first thing that we're going to do is take these little tokens here, and these are different element types. You can see they're not double-sided because you're going to lay these out and then flip these up on each of the hexes except for the city hex so let me do that now so now i've got all of the different element types here you can see you've got air and then fire here as well as we've got water and then also earth or the green one there and the next thing you're going to do is take a bag here and you've got this bag here of these different uh, ingredient tokens here and these are what the players are going to be trying to uh, obtain so we're going to take and randomly put these out onto the board so let me go ahead and do that now so now that we set the ingredient tokens out here you can notice that there's three in each of the city hexes and then there's only two in the non-city hexes there and so what the players are doing is they're trying to collect these ingredient tokens and then put them on their cauldron here you can kind of see there's a little spot for them there and then based on the number of players you're trying to get a certain amount so for a three and a four player game you're trying to either collect all eight or you can get uh, seven different ones so if you have seven different colors then you can immediately win otherwise if you just get eight total then you will win and then that amount that you need to get goes down uh, based on the number of players so you can randomly determine the start player give them this little wizard's hat here and then they are going to take this horse here and put it in one of the city hexes so we'll just put it here for now finally players will get 10 of these energy cubes and i'll just set these aside and they're going to use these for bidding on spell cards. Now there's two types of cards in the game, so let's go over that now. So here we have both types of cards. Now you can see there are cards that match the different elements here. So here we've got the air element token in this particular hex there. We've got a matching card. We've also got the earth elements here. And you can see you've got matching cards there. Now here are a stack of the spell cards. And these look kind of like Magic the Gathering cards a little bit. There's a couple of things to note here. One is the color of the card, and this is actually going to indicate what phase of the turn it applies to. So the green cards here, you can see these are sort of like production cards. This will happen during the element phase. Uh, the ingredient phase, which is sort of like an auction period, uh, these blue ones will happen during that. And then at the end of the each round, you're going to have a sort of cleanup phase. This is called the energy phase, and then the yellow cards will apply during that round. There are also, let me see if I can find it here, some red cards, and these sort of don't, aren't really necessarily tied to a particular phase, uh, but it'll indicate you know when you can use them here. So each player is going to start the game off with two of these dealt to them. And then if they want, they can take and then get rid of some of them, sort of like take a mulligan so you can get rid of one, draw another, or get rid of both. And when you get rid of the spell cards in this game, you just put them actually underneath the deck. So each player is going to start with two, and then what they're going to do is take their energy cubes here. And they're going to uh, basically in secret sort of hide their hand. And then they're going to put energy cubes on these spell cards. And you can see these each have a one. They're either going to have a one or a two there. And when you put the spell cubes on something that has a two, you've got to basically do it in multiples of two. So you can have two, four, six, eight uh, of your energy cubes on there. Otherwise, you can just put any denomination uh, on the ones that have a one and I'll talk about these more in a minute. So for argument's sake, let's say you've got these cards to start with You've got this blue one here It lets you use your earth elemental cards to bid on ingredients Which I'll explain in a minute and then you've got this inferno here, which is just production only So let's say we went ahead and we decided to put uh, two cubes on here and then maybe four on this one I'll explain kind of why you do that uh, in a second. So we've got that so we've got six cubes used up It means we have four left over out of our 10. Now you're never going to have more than 10 total you know, in your general collection there. So you've got four left and these are going to be used through a bidding mechanism for the first phase of a turn and that is called the spell phase. So what's going to happen there is we're going to take this uh, stack of uh, spell cards and then based on the number of players we're going to reveal a certain amount. So if we're playing three players 
we're going to reveal three total cards, but you reveal them one at a time. So we'll take this, we'll flip it up, and then starting with the player that has uh, the wizard marker, he's going to make a bid. So we're only going to go around the table once. So once you make a bid, then that's it. You're kind of locked in. So let's say I'm the wizard guy, I bid one. And then the guy to the left of me passes. And then the next guy can get it for two. So let's say he decides to bid two. So he'll take two cubes, and this is the currency, in effect, that you're bidding with. You take those two cubes, and then you're going to put it on the card as you take the card. So right away. So you're going to lose those but these are going to be used sort of in activating the spell, if you will, and then you'll have, you know, however many cubes you have left over. Now, again, if it was a denomination of two, you've got a bid in denominations of two, four, six, eight. So after revealing three cards and bidding on the one, one at a time, then we're going to go into the next phase. If nobody wants to bid on the card, it just gets discarded, but that still counts to the number of cards that we revealed. And I should say, whoever wins the bid of the current card gets the wizard token and they have to bid first on the next card. So let's just say for argument's sake these are the cards that we have in front of us here. If we can zoom in a little bit here we can take note of what's going to happen in the next phase. And again we've got the player aid cards that are really nice so now we've done the spell bidding phase, we're going to go in the element phase, ingredient phase, and energy phase and again the card colors sort of uh, line up with that. So now we're in the element phase. And what you're going to do here is actually collect the element cards that you have here. So we can see here we're going to collect one of the earth elements, three of the fire elements, and then this one here actually matches the back of the cards. So this is sort of a wild. You can collect any element type that you want. So let's say for argument's sake we're going to draw four, one, two, three, four fire elements, one for the wild and one for these, and then we're going to pull the earth element. And these are going to go into your hand. Nobody's going to see what you've got. Now they can kind of tell pretty easily what you've drawn, but they maybe don't know what you've kept term to turn, and it's a little you know trickier to keep track of, but they can definitely see what you've got available to you based on what you've been producing, and they can also see you know the number of cards in your hand. So that's a very quick phase that just generates elements. So after bidding on some new spell cards, producing the elements, then whoever has the wizard marker here is going to be the first player, and they're going to roll a die. And this is a six-sided die, but it doesn't have a ones or twos on it. You can see you've got three, four, six, three, four, five. So you're going to go ahead and roll that. So let's roll that. So here we've got a six. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take the die here. So let's pretend we rolled a four. So that means we're going to put this on the four. And that's basically going to give us four turns during the ingredient phase. So you mark that, whatever you rolled. And then as basically you move the horse, remember we put a horse out here, you're going to move this down and then when we get to the end, then you're going to have that's going to be the end of the phase. So whoever has the wizard hat here is going to get to move the horse, and then we're basically going to bid again on these ingredient tokens. And remember, these are what you're trying to get and fill up your cauldron with. Now, in the very first turn, the very first action is always going to be where the horse was placed. You're not actually going to move it, but from there on after, you're going to move, you know, one spot, and then you're going to bid. So what you're doing here is you're actually spending these element cards here based on the element of the area except for the city when you can use any and all in a bid and so again starting with the start player you're just going to bid a number of cards that you can play now in this case it the bid is going to go around and around and around it's not like the spell uh, phase where you're bidding with the cubes where you just get one bid you can keep going around and around and around the interesting part about this is you can sort of lie about what cards you have to spend now, if you get caught in the line, you can't actually pay for it. Let's say, you know, you had uh, three of these cards and a bunch of other ones, but you said you had four in bid, and then you get caught. Basically, you have to discard all of your elemental cards, and then you're out of bidding for that uh, particular round. And then we'd have another auction. So we're going to go around and around and around, bidding, you know, when, whatever cards we can, and then the winner is going to be able to take one of these tokens here, and then they're going to move the horse to an adjacent spot as long as there's an adjacent spot that actually has the ingredient tokens. Now towards the end of the game you maybe get to a situation where a lot of these have been gobbled up and there's nothing adjacent to you know where the horse currently is. At that point you can basically draw a straight line and then try to find you know a hex that has uh, you know ingredients available to be bid on. If there's none in a straight line then you can just pick it up and move it wherever you want. So again we're going to do that a number of times until basically we've counted down this track here. Now it is very possible that you can get into a situation where nobody can bid 
on a particular token. So let's say we moved it here and nobody has any of these earth elements to bid on. If a situation like that happens, then the round is going to end immediately and there'll be no more bids and no more moving of the horse. So after this ingredient phase, this auction phase, we're gonna go into the energy phase. And this is a very simple sort of cleanup phase here. Now, if you, again, let's look at the number on these cards here. So this is the number of cubes that these spells are going to eat up at the, at the end of the turn in this phase. So in this case, this will be one. We're gonna remove this one. This one will remove one, and this one will remove two. Now these are gonna go back into our supply for bidding, but after a while, these spells are gonna deteriorate. So in the next round, let's say we didn't get any more spells, these are all going to remove, and then these are all going to get discarded back underneath the bottom of the spell deck. So that is pretty much the basic flow of the game. You're gonna have, a, every round you're gonna have a bidding on new spell cards. You're gonna generate the different elements that you're required, uh, basically based on this little icon there. And then we're gonna move the horse around and try to bid for uh, these different tokens there. And then again, clear off the cubes from the spell cards. However, that's very simple, <laughs> very basic. And then these spell cards, as you can see, like I said, they go into different, uh, apply to different phases of the turn. And these are gonna break all kinds of different rules here. I mean, everything that you can think of from rolling the die, sometimes you can, if you can have a spell to prevent the die roll and you get to choose where the die's at, Sometimes you'll get uh, cards that'll say, during the ingredient phase, you can use fire uh, elements all that you want. So even if we're in an area like here that requires earth elements, you may have a spell card that breaks that rule and you can use fire cards. Or you could get cards that when you win an auction, instead of taking one ingredient, you can take two ingredients. You can get spell cards that let you move ingredient tokens around the board. You can get spell cards that when somebody pays, for an auction, you can actually take one of the cards that they use to pay for into your hand. There's just a ton of variety of this different spell cards here. I mean, there's a red uh, card here. Let's see. No, that's the other one. Uh, where's the counter spell? So there's counter spell. You can actually spend your element cards to basically counter, you know, whatever the ability is of somebody else's card. So really, the trick of the game is going to be sort of learning about all the different cards that are possible when the cards are going to be good, you know, because sometimes the cards will let you uh, do base, different things based on the terrain that you're on. So if the horse is way over here and you have cards that, you know, are up for bid that or have something to do with the forest or the plains, they're not going to be so great if the forest is way over here because it's going to take some time to get them to move over there. So that's basically the gist of the game and let me come back and tell you what I think. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Um, first thing to note is that the box I believe says 60 to 90 minutes. And I probably, you probably get to the higher end of that with six players. I haven't played it with six. I only played it with three a couple of times. Uh, the game is going to end uh, more probably, at least, that, than I expected. Okay, so you can really get some nasty, nasty combos with those spell cards, especially if players aren't really uh, paying too much attention. You have to kind of pay careful watch over, you know, turn order a little bit. It's not turn order heavy. I don't want to give that impression, but where you know, that horse is going to be moving and what spells the different people have and, you know, what they can use and what capabilities they have. And so I've seen turns where uh, basically somebody will get like three or four of those, uh, you know, ingredient discs because they have such a nasty combo of cards. But again, those spells are not going to last forever because again, every round those cubes are going to disappear. So that combo is only going to be happening briefly and then what's going to happen or what i've seen happen is the sort of the momentum is going to shift and then so now maybe i didn't get in on some of those good spell cards but i've you know held on to my cubes that next round comes along and i grab a couple of spell cards now i've got a pretty decent combo and then now i'm going to go on a little bit of a run and get a bunch of ingredients there uh, so it's going to kind of swing back and forth but it when i say swing i don't think the game is really swingy it's but it's you've got to be very careful during that spell bidding phase with that sort of limited amount of cubes that you have. It's a very interesting mechanism to me uh, because you, you're fixed at 10 cubes. Any cubes that you use in bidding are gonna be tied up on your spells, but those spells are going to be, you know, they're very worthwhile unless, you, like I said, you know, you're bidding on one that has something to do with the forest and the horse is way over there and it's gonna take, you know, maybe two turns to get it all the way back over to the forest and you may not have control over that. Uh, you know that much so 
it, that whole thing is very interesting, and it kind of reminds me of sort of like a stock game or 18xx game, where when you're bidding on sort of that first initial stock, you're sometimes, in a sense, sort of overpaying and saying, okay, well, I'm going to put extra money into my railroad, whereas some of these spells are really good. Like, there's one spell, it's a yellow one, that lets you, at the end of the phase, shift the cubes around from the yellow one. So that one gives you a little bit more life in some of your other spells. So I bid, like, I think it was six on that one or something. It was, it was a lot. It was basically the rest of my cubes, but it was going to uh, win the auction. And so I just put them all on there because I knew that that was going to be that much more powerful, um, you know, and help me kind of keep my engine going a lot longer. So that's kind of interesting. So you, the way that you invest in the spells and the sort, and the spells aren't something that you play, you know, it's something that has sort of persists turn by turn and then kind of dissipates and the energy and all that stuff behind them goes away. And that's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's basically what I just said there. Uh, is to me the key of the game is really being aware of those spells and then yeah you kind of move around and yes you can get like seven different ones but um, nobody won by that but one of the games somebody was very close they didn't end up winning they had six different ones and then somebody else was able to go and grab too quickly on the on the later turn so it's definitely uh, a wonky thing you know I think the brutality of it and this game can be very brutal especially the first time you play uh, because you're not going to really kind of realize the value of the spells and necessarily some of the combos and things that you can get with them. Uh, so, but I don't think it's too luck dependent. At first I was kind of like, well, that's kind of like lucky because, you know, they flipped a spell, you know, and they, they did this and it worked well with their other thing, but everybody has access to them. As long as you're sort of smart about, you know, holding your cubes back and, you know, kind of hedging your bets for, you know, a really nice spell that's going to be, uh, you know, good for the opportunities of where that horse is at and everything like that. So anyway, it's a very, very interesting game, and I definitely uh, recommend folks uh, take a look at it. Uh, it. But again, it can be very brutal to sort of have this abrupt end where I'm able to go boom, 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 and just sort of muscle my way through, you know, by having cards that let me play whatever elements I want to bid or grab two of the ingredient tokens at once when I win an auction. I mean, some of those stuff can really just, you can just, you know, end the game right there. Uh, so anyway, so that's Wizard's Brew. Thanks.